I just recorded a podcast, me as a guest, with the podcast called How to Talk to Mommy and Poppy About Anything. So I'm going to leave the show notes link for that podcast. The question is, how do we encourage if we know mom, dad, tita may benefit from receiving therapy? How do we encourage them to seek therapy and to keep at therapy if it's the healing journey that fits their need? Let's talk about that in this episode. Are Filipinos truly bilingual? We use the same language at home, but speak and love languages foreign to each other, together but separated. Kamusta? I'm Rowan, licensed psychotherapist mom, immigrant twice, first-generation Pinay raising my mixed Filipino-American children in America. I found that after visiting 500 Filipino homes, I continue to be a student of the culture. In this podcast, we would be seatmates in this beautiful cultural classroom. And by the way, did I tell you I need my kaping barako straight from Batangas before each class? If you're interested in learning the deep intricacies of the Filipino culture, especially as it merged with American culture, talks about trauma-informed care and deepening your Filipino relationships across generations, which includes my fave topic, Pinoy Love Languages, you're in the right place. This episode is brought to you by the free 5-day inner child prompts so what you would get are five days of creative prompts that you can do in less than 10 minutes to heal your inner child or at least nurture that inner child the link will be in the show notes if you like this podcast and the heartfelt message that i'm attempting to share with you and also your energy back Whether it's your likes, your emails, that is also fueling me. So I see this whole podcasting as a conversation. If you're liking what you're hearing, please leave a stellar review. When you see the show notes, there you would find a way to leave a review. I thank you. Maraming salamat in advance for doing that. It will help other people to find us all of us so we could hang out in this podcast together hello friends welcome to the pinoy love language podcast this is your host broan again the question is if we have a parent and we feel because now many of our younger filipino american philippine next generation are accessing mental health care more Because of that awareness, they are also subscribing to it and want family members who they see may benefit from it to subscribe to it. That's great. I'm really stoked that this is happening and that this is a constant question that I am getting. Now, one thing to be mindful of is that even though I love therapy and I feel like Everybody should have a taste of what it feels like to be in therapy. Therapy is not for everyone. There are other great healing modalities that might work for mom, for auntie, and therapy might just be one of them. Now, one way to be more aware of is that the way we express our emotional longing i call it emotional longing whether it's the need to be felt be seen be heard we may be using different language for that one of the reason can be because in the west we separate the mind and the body in more collectivistic cultures specifically for the filipino culture the mind and the body is not separate and what you would find is that our elders might be using physical symptom more as a way to express their something that something might be wrong with their mental health now of course not all physical 
symptom means that there's something to look at psychologically. So of course you we want to go to the doctor, check out mom, and so we could rule out if there is other explanation, a physiological explanation why they're constantly having a headache or stomach pains. But if there aren't any findings, then we can explore further. I would use the language of mom or dad. I'll just use mom for, because we're always using mom, so I'm, I'm going to stick with our <laughs> story here. If mom is constantly, constantly complaining about her headache, I'll use the headache to introduce therapy as a way to alleviate her headache because that what speaks to mom. Now, there is always no guarantee and it, that's not a promise. So it's almost simply a proposal. So use your mom's language. Secondly, we want to be encouraging but not to be forceful. Remember the feeling when you don't feel like you have the agency. We don't want to put mom in that position where she feels she's just doing it for you. Although sometimes that's also a strategy that mom is doing it for the rest because it's hard for her to really accept that she needs it. In her mind, I'm cool. I, I'm, I, I don't need this. Along with that, it, it sounds so counterintuitive. Aside from not forcing, also using a way that speaks to mom. What is important to mom? Maybe hanging out with family is important to her. Maybe being able to play mahjong is important to her. So then I would use that to motivate mom because truly when mom feels good about herself, she can hang out with friends more, laugh more. But I wouldn't use my language because we know you're already convinced, you know, the importance of mental health care. Mom may not know that. And she, the words that you use might not resonate with her. Again, just to review, first is to use her language. And two, to really emphasize or to discover what matters to her. And, and ca amplifying that. Number three is... Using collective pronouns. I also shared this in the podcast. I mentioned how to talk about anything with uh, mommy and poppy. Check out that podcast after listening to this one. Using collective pronoun, making it like it's a family thing, you know, for her to receive therapy. We're receiving therapy. This is for us we are going to feel better so instead of you are going to feel better this is for you for us in the west we know self-care is very important oh this is for you to have so now you can take care of yourself this is true you know if you're selling a product you want that to work for the person who's buying the product so because you're already sold on it also this is a rather short podcast episode to know that we get to our own healing in different ways different time different pacing and it's quite all right leave it open-ended for mom use your own space and as i say you know like show is always better than tell so if you're getting your own therapy and people are frowning upon it, that's okay. They just don't have a model. Once they see you, wow, you're like have more energy. You see more joyful. That is the show part. Nothing could really exchange more of the show if we're just telling and we're telling a story that the person could not really comprehend. It's very foreign to them. So when that's the case, show is better than tell. Finally, to remember that we all get to our healing journey, like I mentioned, different timing, and to honor that. Even if mom is still not open to receiving therapy, visit her often. Most of the time, our elders want to be remembered, and they may 
become more dramatic. <laughs> they might say, oh, never mind if I die. Or it's okay, you know, like, I, I, it doesn't matter. They don't worry about me. What they actually want to say is to worry about me. And it's like a checking, testing, if you will. That could be irritating sometimes because I already asked you, why didn't you say you want me to come by and visit? There is a whole nuance around that because as I've explained in other podcast episode, we're taught to be polite. When I say we, like more of the immigrants are taught to be very polite. That's emphasizing the culture. So a one-time visit, one would think, did she really want to visit or is she just being a good daughter? But if you do it often, especially when she says no, and you know that she's just saying that, and you still visit that one, that that's precious for them. That's when they really feel that you remember them, that they are not forgotten. It's always a two-way street. It's not just you also remembering. Rest assured when they feel remembered that you will get a lot of loving. But when it's sporadic, sometimes... The first time that you attempt it again is going to be rough because they're testing. Is this a sincere visit or she just feels bad about me? I know sometimes that sounds terrible, this whole testing. But just know that cultures are different. What may be safe to express here might not be safe to express in other culture. And so rather than trying to figure out that is wrong or that is right just choose what is effective because we might be wasting our time trying to prove our point or to be right and then we miss the time to connect and indeed time flies and not to say that there are no lessons to be learned both ways of course there's always space for that but as i end this episode i'm really wishing you lots of connection my purpose here is to be your cultural whisperer that I'm hoping, really, that we find a way that we could speak language that the Filipino-American and the Filipino immigrant could speak equally well. So I'm going to leave you with that. Wishing you well. Wishing you safety and lots of love. Again, this is Rowan at Saluting. Bye now.